Okie dokie folks, today we're going to be doing a simple head contact test with a china marker. I had just gotten this head block back from John French at JRF, Ma JRF Magnetics. He did a relapping procedure. This baby's ready to go. And I'm going to do a full fletched out video, fletched out whatever, a whole video talking about aligning this machine with a uh, calibration tape and everything. And I'm going to do that very soon. I'm working on that. Um, that's going to be, you know, a much longer, <clears throat> much longer in depth video. But for this, I really just want to talk about a simple adjustment you could make and do some testing with just a simple china marker and your tape heads. And as far as I know, there's no video on the internet showing how to do this. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not even sure I'm doing it right. I've only ever read about it in one place and it's pretty simple. So hopefully I'm not screwing anything up here and telling you wrong information, but it's pretty simple. So let's just move forward and talk about what we're going to be doing in this video. So before. Before you do anything, before you get to the step, you want to make sure your transport is mechanically aligned. Every machine's procedures are going to be vastly different. You're going to have to read the manual of your machine. I had just done that to everything on this machine. I checked everything. Everything was pretty much good because I, you know, this machine was running beforehand. So the transport system is good to go. So now it's on to the head alignment and then the electronic alignment. And now when I say head alignment, we're talking about two things here. One, the angle at which, if you're looking at this machine from above, the angle at which the heads are facing. And ideally, you want the middle of the head to be perfectly perpendicular to the tape machine, uh, to the tape as it's traveling across the head. The next thing is the zenith adjustment. And the zenith adjustment is not to be confused with the azimuth adjustment. The azimuth adjustment is, if you're looking at your tape head here, you know, whether the tape head's tilted this way, tilted this way. A zenith adjustment is the tilt, let's say, towards the camera, towards the front of the machine here. So if I'm exaggerating, if your zenith adjustment was wildly off and your tape head was leaning forward like this over the tape front of the tape machine, you know, that's a bad zenith adjustment. That's why I actually got this head block aligned because the zenith adjustment on re the reproduce head was off and I was getting a trapezoidal wear pattern. I'll show that on the camera here to see what I'm talking about. So you can see when your zenith adjustment is not set up correctly, you're going to get a trapezoidal wear pattern. In the picture you're seeing on the screen here with my head, the top of my reprodu reproduce head was tilted slightly forward. So the top of the wear pattern is bigger than the top th than the bottom of the wear pattern, right? So that's the second adjustment, the zenith adjustment. Now, Really, on this machine, there's actually no zenith adjustment, so really, I'm just hoping when I do this China market test that it shows a good and steady or uh, a good and uniform wear pattern and I won't have to worry about it. Um, hopefully, the transport alignment I did takes care of whatever was out of whack last time. So, once again, we're doing two things. The angle at which the head is contacting the tape not the azimuth adjustment, and then the zenith adjustment, also not the azimuth adjustment. The azimuth adjustment is done, am I pronouncing it rightly, azimuth? That is done uh, with a calibration tape, and you know it's a lot more fine tuning than what we're doing here. This is macro tuning. Um, when you do the calibration tape and everything, that's fine tuning, okay? So let's just get started, okay? I should note that for this particular machine, the manual states to do the head contact adjustment, which is what I'm doing right now, should be done electronically where you have a calibration tape with a steady tone, you play the tape, and as the tape is playing, you adjust the angle and see where the signal is the loudest. And wherever the signal is the loudest, that should be perfectly where you want your head to be uh, angled at. Uh, you know, that's where you're going to get your maximum volume output. However, I have just found that the adjustment on this machine is so uh, rough that it, it's hard to do fine tuning. And I actually already did the reproduce head on this machine with this China market test. And to my eyes, it looks great. It's good for my concerns here. Um, so there's really two ways to do a head contact alignment. This is kind of the poor man's way. And honestly, I just found it a lot easier. Uh, so let's zoom in here. All right, so let's get a little closer on this head block so we can see what's going on. Now, as I just mentioned, I already aligned this reproduce head, and we're going to use that as a uh, you know a reference. I want you to see what it should look like. And I want to point out something on these these, uh, these particular heads. You know, every head's going to be different, but you see this little black triangle here. You see how on the right side of that triangle it is completely straight up and down, perpendicular with the tape path. 
that is the middle of the head. That is where we want the wear pattern to be centered on, okay? So that is what we're looking at both on the reproduce, uh, I'm sorry, the record head and the reproduce head. Now, as I already mentioned, I already aligned this reproduce head, but I'm going to mark it up with this china marker so you can see what it should look like, okay? I'm gonna actually mark up both heads because we're gonna be adjusting this head in this video. So let's just mark this up and don't think too much about it. Just start, start marking it up probably doing more than I need to, but I think, you know, ideally you should do this with a white china marker because it's easier to see. Um, that's why I'm putting more than I really should be putting on because it's, the blue is hard to see on camera. So that's a lot on there. Um, let's do the same for the reproduce head. There you go. And I should also mention whatever tape you're using to do this test because you need to run a tape across the heads, you know, you don't want it to be uh, tape that you're going to use because you're obviously getting China marker all over your tape. Now this tape is a bum batch of tape. It's no good. It's got problems. I already got it replaced by um, recording the masters. You know, uh, these new tape companies are really good at replacing tapes that are not good when you occasionally get one. Um, so anyway, I have it uh, uh, marked up. Let's turn the machine on. And what we're going to do is, is we're just going to play the tape for a little bit of time here. Let's first get it lined up here. All right, let's press play. All right, so let's see what we got. Let's look at the. Let's first look. Let's look at the reproduce head, and I hope it's easy to see on camera. It's even hard to see in, in person, to be honest with you. But let's zoom in here. You can see where the china marker has weared away, and it is directly centered on the right side of. If you look at this point here on this triangle that I'm pointing at, if you follow it straight down. It's in, right in the middle of this wear pattern. That's exactly what we want. The wear pattern is more or less uniform. I'm really happy with that. So let's look at the reproduce head now. Okay, so we're zoomed in on the reproduce head now. And once again, I know it's hard to see on camera. I'm telling you it's a lot easier to see in person. But for looking at the wear pattern, first thing is that there's no trapezoidal wear pattern that looks good to my eyes, very uniform. Now, with where the wear pattern is, hopefully you could see on camera, but the left side of this wear pattern, where it starts, is more or less aligned with the right side of this triangle here. And that means that we're not directly centered. If I'm using this pencil as an um, indication of the front of the head, we are going to want to move it this way. You know, I'm exaggerating greatly here, but we're going to make a small adjustment to move it that way. Let's do that and see what happens. Now that was kind of a big adjustment, but let's see what we get. And that's what I was trying to say before, you know, the way the manual says to do the head contact test, I don't know, it just seems really hard because the, the adjustment is just so coarse and um, I don't know. But let's start with the fresh slate. Let's clean off this head with some alcohol. Let's put some more china marker on it. Once again, I'm putting more than you probably need to do, but I, I just want it to be as clear as possible for the camera. All right, let's see what we got. So taking a closer look with my eyes, that's good for me. I would say these heads for my purposes are head contact aligned. I'm happy. And now I should be ready to move on to the full you know, electrical alignment of the machine, which was probably going to be my next video coming out. So take a look for that. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace. Two seconds later. And we're back, baby. So I thought this video was going to be done, but as I'm doing a closer look at my reproduce head, I sense the slightest degree of a trapezoidal wear pattern. And it's going to be impossible to show on camera. But I'm telling you, my eyes, it's like a thousandth of a degree of a trapezoidal pattern. And you got to remember, your eyes are actually really good at detecting things like that. You know, um, you know, curves and straight lines. Your eyes are actually really good. So sometimes you have to trust your eyes. And my eyes are telling me that there's still a trapezoidal wear pattern there. And the whole point of me relapping the heads were to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a shim underneath the front of the reproduce head trying to make it tilt backwards more 
and we're going to run the same test again, and hopefully we, I could get rid of that trapezoidal wear pattern, so let's see what happens. All right, so here you can see that, you know, I have the reproduce head loose now. All I'm gonna do is I took a piece of tape, I folded it upon itself so it's two layers thick. I'm gonna put it right under the front of the reproduce head. And we're gonna try that at first. Hopefully, you know, that is all the thickness I need. I don't wanna go too crazy here. It's a really small adjustment. So I'm gonna tighten down the head again and we'll go from there. And you know, something you gotta realize with tape machines and when you're doing alignments like this, both mechanical and electrical, you know, it, it's very iter iterative where you change one thing, it affects the other thing. You have to start all over again, you gotta go back. You're fine tuning, fine tuning, fine tuning. It, you know, it could be very frustrating. I've been probably at this for probably about eight hours today. I've been, I haven't even gotten to the electrical calibration yet. I, I've just been for eight hours doing the mechanical um, fine tuning. And, you know, really, maybe I'm going a little farther than I need to, but, you know, th there, there's, a, there's a certain threshold with tape machines, with cars, if you're like adjusting a carburetor, whatever you're working on, you know, th this, these mechanical systems, there's always a threshold where it's, you could probably just go, eh, that's good enough for my purposes, right? And that's so, so true with tape machines, you know. People online get really, really particular, but I have found, especially with tape machines, um, especially once you get the electrical calibration, that, you know, there's, the, the threshold's pretty low. You know, you could get a, a working machine um, without going crazy, without doing uh, a thousand tests, this and that. You know, you really just have to use your brain and your logic and to determine at what point is, uh, you know, good enough. And All right, so I'm gonna mark the head again. And we're gonna run through the test again. This is like the 20th time today, if you believe it. But, you know, I want this thing to be perfect where I won't have to worry about the, you know, the, the tape head wearing inconsistently. That's a really big thing. You want your tape heads to wear consistently and uniformly. That's something you want to take a lot of time and make sure it's correct. There, you don't want to cut corners. Other places, eh, maybe you could cut some corners. All right, enough yapping. Let's just press play and see what happens. You know, something I'm realizing is that this China marker dries out the longer it's been on the heads, and I think it takes longer if I let it dry out. So you know what, I'm gonna reapply the China marker, and I hope we get some quick results, because this thing's been running a while and it's barely showing it anywhere. All right, so my angle looks good. You know, in relation to where my pencil is showing the angle. That looks good. It's too early to tell if there's a trapezoidal pattern. So I'm going to keep running. And we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this reproduce head. I don't know what's going on this record head. Let's try this one more time. As you can see, I'm trying different methods here. I, I'm starting to think that the less China marker I put on there, actually the better, the, qu um, the quicker I do the test so it doesn't dry out, the better. I don't know. I don't know. This China marker is also probably about two decades old, so that might be part of the reason why it's taking so long to do this. All right, all right. I would say that looks about as uniform as it's going to get, baby. I'm digging where it's at, and I think this machine is finally ready for an electrical alignment, starting with the azimuth. So I'm going to do another video on that. It's going to be more thought out, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, baby. Kisses.